Hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and in this video let's explore somehow mysterious function called HDRPQ, which is very easy to overlook and underestimate. And it's a shame, because for Canon it unlocks the amazing world of high dynamic range, which is slowly starting to conquer cameras, mobile phones, computers, in short, everything. And it's really very easy and very interesting to play with it. So let's do it just now. In this video we'll go through everything in detail, but to start let's quickly summarize what I will try to decode and explain. So, all Canon mirrorless cameras, except I think the cheapest Canon R100, offer the option to turn on something called HDRPQ. And at that point, two things will happen. First, we will take photos with a higher dynamic range, which, when viewed on HDR monitors, will really look great, different, magical. And then, secondly, when you turn on HDRPQ, by definition, you'll be using HAVE, meaning not only a big shift in dynamic range, but also in color depth. And uh, you know that you're using the old 8-bit JPEG and HAVE has 10 bits, which actually means that uh, you can clearly see when using a good monitor that the quality of shots you just made are just much better. So, the HAVE as such deserves to be mentioned as a key unlocking new dimensions. And now you probably think, well, what should I do because I have no HDR computer? But do not worry, because it's actually very easy. And I will show you in a couple of minutes that you can use a free software called Canon Photo Professional. I am pretty confident that you will like it and you will understand that even in a non-HDR world there are so many tricks you can play with. And one more detail, yes, if the name HAVE sounds somehow familiar to you, you are right, <laughs> because exactly the same file is in your iPhone for many, many years. Right, let us decode this all in greater detail. But you probably know shots like this. This is from my holidays in Tuscany last year. And uh, why am I showing you this is because I just would like you to remind of a term you have probably heard, and it's HDR. I mean, the old HDR, the, the one which is here. And uh, basically what it does is that you remember that you are just sad that uh, there is too much light and too much darkness and the picture is just not nice. So you just do the old fashioned HDR, which means that the camera will produce three or maybe maybe even five shots and combine them either directly in the camera or you can use a software and put them together. And that's basically what you get here. This, so this is the old fashioned HDR we were using and doing for many years. And um, well, for many photographers, when you mention HDR, uh, they just well, don't like it at all, because for many people HDR also means a thing which can be slightly seen here. And it's like the overblown colors, a lot of unnatural things. And simply uh, the HDR for many photographers means, well, something you should never touch. But what we have now is the new HDR uh, we'll be playing with today. And it's called HDRPQ. So let's turn it on. And now you can see that you can either capture these shots in HAVE or RAW. So let's try the, uh, the HAVE uh, version. And suddenly you see that you open a new world, uh, that the shots are now recorded in HAVE, as you can see here in the right corner, and that they look really differently. Yes, they do, because that process means that you are actually trying to squeeze much more information into the frame. What we really need to do is to open these shots on uh, the HDR monitor, which I did here, but obviously this print screen is not HDR, it's just a very ordinary one, so you can't see what you would see if you open it um, on a proper one. And the cow on the left side would just be really glowing, the whites would be shining, and you would immediately see that the difference between uh, the proper thing, the HDR photo, and the, the old uh, JPEG is just huge. And once you try it, you'll be uh, 
tempted to try it again and again and again. One more example from Tuscany. On the left side is a Have with HDR. On the right side is a normal JPEG. And it's actually quite nice example because you can immediately see that it, when you view a Have, it means the HDR format, uh, there are much more details in, in the shadows. And at the same time, the lights are much brighter. Of course, it's somehow even painful for me to show you these print screens, which are just not able to show what you should see. But you, I guess you get some idea. Simply, uh, HDR means much, much more of details, much more information squeezed into the frame. Once you start playing with that, you'll be lost, I, I can guarantee. So let's explain what actually HDRPQ means. Uh, this is a great uh, Canon's illustration. And uh, in the corner, you'll see that, well, we have the real world, a lot of a huge dynamic range, a lot of colors. And obviously, when, when we start shooting and use uh, JPEG, uh, we, we just reduce the, the, the number of colors and the dynamic range, of course. And we can either use a RAW, that, that makes sense, or as you can see here, we are able to use HAVES. And HAVE means, as we already illustrated, two things. First, it has by definition much higher dynamic range and also it, it has 10 bits. So again, by definition, and you can see it even here in that illustration, it is able to record much more colors. So, as I already mentioned, if you really try all this on a proper HDR monitor or a display, you'll just see how amazing that shot would look. Of course, you might be telling me that why should I bother with something which is HDR when I have no HDR displayed HBR computer? Yes, you are right. Obviously, the new world will come only when you buy it. But at the same time, if you'd want to experiment, if you just want to play, uh, there is a great option to do it. And uh, the option is called Digital Photo Professional, which is a Canon software and it's free. Uh, you can download it. I think you only need a code, a serial number of your camera and you can start. You can see that we can compare and edit and do many things. So what am I doing right now is I'm trying to show you comparison between a shot in uh, HDR in uh, HDR PQ, which is on the left side and the ordinary JPEG, which is here on the right side. The way to play, for instance, is to hit a button edit image right here. So and this is the way how to play with it. We hit tone curve adjustment and we can do some very basic stuff. I move the curve up and you see what happened. And if you basically do what I do, meaning moving with the curve, you'll see that you are able to manipulate with so many things. You will see that there is so much detail, so much information hidden in the shot that uh, you are just not able to do the same with uh, the ordinary JPEG. So this is a great exercise, great test to see that, uh, that the new generation of uh, data is really coming with HAVE, it's coming with HDR, and uh, yes, you can see it that, of course, now if I would like to do some more editing, I could do something more precise and I can export it into JPEG because by doing that this way, you can preserve much more data, much more information. And of course, if you go to Tuscany, for instance, and you do not feel like using RAWs all the time, uh, HAVE could be a great option to have something in between. It means a file which can contain much more data, much more information, much more space, much more dynamic range than uh, the ordinary JPEG. So for instance, you can do what I do right now, right here, if you are in some very complex, very complicated situation like here in Tuscany, you can just export, convert uh, your HAVE into JPEG. And uh, well, the results would be uh, simply much better than if you use ordinary JPEG. One more example, we've seen a lot of these cows already, but let's see them once more here. And again, 
we can use the same as we've seen before. And here we go again, JPEG on the right side, Have on the left side, and it can be tempting to th think that uh, the JPEG is nicer. Well, it is sort of nicer because we are viewing that only on a normal monitor of my MacBook Pro, but you already know the trick if I had edit image, we can play with the world of HDR and see this in action. And uh, I can really assure you that once you do it, of course, the best would be to do all that on a HDR monitor, that's clear. But even if you do what I do right now, so you use your very ordinary a laptop or ordinary machine, you'll be just amazed what can be done by playing with curves like I do here, because you can see immediately that uh, you are able to preserve a lot of information in shadows. And at the same time, you are able to keep an amazing level of details in whites. And why am I doing that on the poor cow? <laughs> you can guess it because, of course, this is very tough. We have a white which is in shadow. We have a lot of shadows in background, sunshine. And generally, it's tough for any camera to work with this. And I really believe this is a great example of how HDR can help you even uh, when you are not fully emerged in the HDR world. Because it's here and once you try playing with this, I can guarantee it won't be easy to go back. One more important detail. As Canon shows us here, you can do conversion from HAVE to JPEG. And what that illustration suggests and what we'll see is actually true that once you do it, you are able to get much better results from the JPEG you receive. Uh, let's see it. So first where, where you do it, you just go here to this menu and you activate this, select image and click and say as new file. So what we've just done now is that we are receiving the JPEG converted from HAVE. And why should we play with that. Uh, I have some testing photos here. This is a normal JPEG taken as JPEG and this is JPEG converted from HAVE. And even here you can see that in the windows JPEG, JPEG from HAVE and you can immediately see the difference. This is the original boring normal JPEG and this is the new <laughs> braver JPEG made from HAVE and you can see what really matters. That uh, the, the HAVE really helped us to get some more details uh, into lights and this is really important to remember because it could be useful as we can see here in these examples from Tuscany. Again, I apologize that these are just print screens from some applications so this is really illustration not the real thing but still it works. So that is roughly how the HAVE would look in your camera or in uh, your computer. And if you make the conversion, you see that the new JPEG is actually able to have much more details to be simply nicer. One more example. You can see this. Again, please take this just like a illustration of the proper thing because <laughs> we are print screening things which should not be print screening. But anyway, uh, and you can see the difference. This is the HAVE and this is JPEG made from HAVE. And uh, why that matters? I think it could matter a lot because obviously, yeah, the RAW is the king. If you want amazing shots, you'll be using RAW. There's nothing else to add to this. But for instance, just imagine that you would be walking through the streets of Tuscany and you just wouldn't feel like, you know, recording and saving everything in RAWs. But if you just turn on uh, the shooting in HAVES, in HDRPQ, you immediately do two things. First, if you turn on HAVES in walks like this, you'll be receiving much bigger quality of what you get. And even on the spot, you just decide, okay, I need this shot for my Instagram. You can immediately export it. You can immediately convert it. And probably in many cases, the JPEG would be nicer and would have obviously much higher dynamic range, even as JPEG, which I think is quite interesting and useful thing to remember. 
So thank you so much for your attention. I do hope that your photos will have much higher dynamic range from today. Take care. I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic.